Nikola Jokic could very well go down in NBA history as the best second round pick ever. Actually, I think he already has a case for that. Historically, that top spot has been either Manu Ginobili or Marc Gasol or Jeff Hornacek. As a pure talent, and when it comes to the numbers, Jokic is better than all of them. In fact, statistically, he's already the greatest passing center of all time. However, it wasn't always like this. How did a guy become an MVP caliber player despite being the 41st pick of the draft? Why did he go so low? Did people really not know about him? What made him under the radar? Why did he have a lot of doubters? How's it going folks? My name's Andy, and today, let's take a look at 5 crazy stories of Nikola Jokic. Stories that defined his basketball journey and turned him from a young boy in Serbia to an absolute beast in the NBA. But before we start, have you ever been interested in sports betting? If so, you should download BetQL, the only app you need to make smart bets. Their best bets algorithm scans over 350,000 unique bets per year to give you a best bet recommendation for every game across all major sports, and it gives you the reasoning behind why you should place the bet. It covers everything from spreads, over and unders, and player props. BetQL has a ton of tools to make you a more informed better. They've got data that tells you who the pros are betting on, plus team summaries and previous successful bets, while keeping you updated on any breaking news or injuries. BetQL is available on the App Store and Google Play Store. Or you can visit my link, enter my code ANDYHOOPS at checkout to get 25% off any subscription. Also, check out their Sportsbook Offers page if you live in one of the eligible states to claim free offers upon signing up. Don't miss out on this chance. Number 5. The Discovery of Jokic Coming from a small town in Serbia, there weren't too many scouts around who are looking for talent. Eastern Europe has always been a hotbed for NBA talent. But for Jokic, he wasn't really known at all until his later teenage years. In fact, he was discovered by accident. A sports agent named Mishko Raznadovic was actually looking for somebody else, not Jokic. But one day, he read the newspaper. The headline talked about a young, tall kid who played for a junior club in Serbia, and he scored 25 points and 20 rebounds in a game. This grabbed the attention of Raznadovic, and now he set his sights to meet this kid. When he contacted his friends and other scouts, they had no idea who this kid was. They never heard about Jokic. He was about to be 18 years old, and yet literally was not on anyone's radar. That's unheard of for any future NBA star. Most people know about them from a very young age, but not Jokic. Raznadovic did not understand why. I mean, he's dominating in the junior division, and all the articles described him as being very talented, with a very high basketball IQ. Jokic improved and rose up the ranks super quickly, as he only started being a serious basketball player a few years prior. But he had this certain level of natural talent and instincts that you cannot teach. So how come most scouts did not even pay attention to him? Well, the issue was, up until this point, Raznadovic has not even seen what Jokic looked like. Well, <laughs> he saw his face, but nothing else. It turns out, Jokic was incredibly overweight. Almost 7 feet tall, but over 300 pounds. And he wasn't a strong overweight player either. You know, like Shaq was also overweight, but he was also ridiculously strong. Jokic was just fat. He was flabby. He had the shape of a sack of potatoes. And you wouldn't even think he was an athlete if you just looked at him. Actually, he couldn't even do a single push-up. There was hardly any muscle on him. Just layers upon layers of blubber. Scouts also believed Jokic was dominating because he simply outmassed everyone else on the floor, an advantage that he would not have in the professional ranks. However, Raznadovic still believed in him and the sheer skill he brought to the table. He stated, Soon I received the info that his build and physique was meek and lousy, and that this was a player who is overweight, but that he's got great talent. I said to Tadija, a sports agent, that he should travel to Novi Sad, a city in Serbia, on the very next day and that he shouldn't return until the kid signs with the agency, which happened during that week. 
Later on, he suggested Jokic should travel to Belgrade, the capital of Serbia, and play for Megabasket, their pro team, which he eventually did. That's when he started to slowly gain some exposure. Number 4. The Worst Diet Ever In his early days as a pro player in Europe, Jokic surprised everyone. He was putting up respectable numbers against pro players, despite he himself not even sure if he wanted to turn pro. Basketball, for most of his life, was just… a hobby. He was more interested in horse racing and taking care of the horses at the stable. That was his passion, not basketball. According to his coaches in Serbia, it was rare to see someone like Jokic. For instance, it's rare for a team whose best player is in fact a kid who just wants to play basketball, who doesn't take it seriously at all, and who doesn't really want to be concerned with basketball on some days. At times, his lack of seriousness rubbed his coaches and teammates the wrong way. He had guys working their ass off just to get minutes to make it in the pros. And then you had this kid, Jokic, who didn't care about basketball 90% of the time, who seemed very lackadaisical when it came to any sort of discussion around his talent. And yet, he was still the best player on the team. But the worst of it was his diet. Apparently, he drank 2 liters of coke for breakfast, along with eating like half a kilogram of borek, a savory pastry that's very common in Eastern Europe. Throughout the day, on average, he reportedly drank over a gallon of coke per day. When he first joined the Denver Nuggets, former trainer Steve Hess stated, When he first came to us, he was 295 pounds. He thought soft drinks high in sugar were okay and candy was okay. Freaking coke, man. It's freaking poison. Just the worst. That was the worst, but once we got him off of that, he was good to go. Over the years, his diet has drastically improved, however, his weight has always fluctuated, depending on the season. Sometimes, he shows up looking like this. But after the pandemic break was over, Jokic came back in surprisingly great shape. Over the years, he's lost over 50 pounds since joining the NBA, a remarkable feat. Number 3. A Taco Bell Draft Night Do you guys remember Jokic having his name called out on draft night in 2014? Well, you probably don't because it never happened. It was never broadcasted. Instead, a Taco Bell commercial was accidentally running during Denver's selection at the 41st pick. They were advertising the new Taco Bell Quesarita, which is actually pretty good, I've had it before. Thanks to this commercial, no doubt. So, we never heard Adam Silver announce his name getting drafted. It's quite funny, actually, especially after I talked about how bad his diet was. They played a Taco Bell commercial during his draft selection. Normally, getting drafted is a huge moment for every player, and I'd be pissed if they played a commercial over the biggest moment of anyone's life. But for Jokic, he wasn't at the draft. He wasn't even in America. Nor was he even watching the draft. He was sleeping at his home in Serbia. At this point in his life, he wasn't even sure if he wanted to play in the NBA, so he never cared about getting drafted. His brothers were watching the draft though, and when the Nuggets drafted him, this is what happened, according to Jokic. My brother had celebrations and champagne and he called to tell me. I picked up the phone, but I really wasn't listening. I just told him, come on man, I'm sleeping. Then I hung up. So I heard the next morning, I didn't think it was going to be a big thing. I thought, they drafted me and I stay one more season in Europe. I didn't think that I was going to make it to the NBA right away. <laughs> the complete lack of excitement and concern was hilarious. I don't know what else I expected from Jokic. Number 2. Jokic invites coach Mike Malone to his hometown. Early in his NBA career, Jokic was kind of a recluse. He kept to himself a lot, and not many people knew about his background. However, coach Mike Malone was one of the first people to reach out and develop a relationship with him. Malone spent a summer visiting his hometown of Sombor, a small town in northern Serbia of around 50,000 people. It was here where he witnessed Jokic in his natural habitat. His love for horses was greater than his love for basketball. A Nuggets assistant coach described this as, quote, his happy place. Jokic would go on for hours and hours just talking about horses. 
and he showed the Nuggets staff his stable and all of his racehorses, including his newly purchased one which he named Dreamcatcher. When Malone was there, the first thing they did was watch a horse race, where Dreamcatcher surprisingly got first place, his first ever first place title. During his visit, he would tag along everywhere Jokic and his brothers went, from local smoke shops and breweries to autograph signings. Apparently, Jokic signed autographs for hours upon hours, to the point where he injured his arm. The tendon in his arm got inflamed and he couldn't play for a while because of it. One of the more funny injuries we've heard of. Injury from signing too many autographs. Anyway, it was this trip to Serbia that bonded Malone and Jokic, and nowadays they've got arguably the best camaraderie between a coach and a superstar player. Years later, Jokic admitted that this experience definitely meant so much to him. He felt like an outsider in Denver and to have his coach reach out to him like this, he felt so good about it, Malone helped him grow tremendously. Number 1. Jokic almost signed with Barcelona instead of coming to the NBA. FC Barcelona is one of the strongest teams in Europe, and back then, before Jokic decided to come over to the NBA, they were paying very close attention to him. Keep in mind, while Jokic got drafted in 2014, he did not come over until a year later. During that year, a lot of European teams were trying to pursue him, trying to entice him to stay in Europe, and play for a top-tier Euroleague team. FC Barcelona was the frontrunner, and according to Raznatovic, the guy who discovered Jokic, he explained, It is less known that Nikola was very near to signing a contract with Barcelona. They followed him for some time and arrived for final talks and to watch his game. We agreed on the transfer terms basically in detail, and the only thing left to do was to work out the last details next morning after the match. A deal with Barcelona was in place. It was about to happen, but what exactly happened? What happened was, the night before the contract was supposed to be signed, scouts for Barcelona attended the game that Jokic was in, and in that game, he had the worst performance of his entire life. He was so bad that Barcelona was reconsidering the contract, and after witnessing that disaster, they told him that they needed some more time to think about it. Barcelona started to mull over their decision, but they didn't have enough time to make their decision, because Jokic decided to come to America and play for Denver. He chose the NBA, and he joined the Nuggets in the 2015 offseason. The rest is history. Thank you everybody so much for watching, I hope y'all enjoyed the video. Which story was your favorite? Do you know of any other interesting Jokic stories that most people don't know about? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, thank you again so much for watching, and of course, as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.